Hello, I'm Audio. This is my glorious channel. This is Sengoku Rants, and specifically, it's still just Sengoku Rants, because I haven't actually entered a route yet, but... Um, you can tell by the end of the last part there, um, that Isoroku wants, you know, to get her family going again. She's all that's left, which is kind of weird. I don't ever tell you what happened to her parents. Um, you know what happened to her brother, um, but I mean, that's it, you know? Like, she didn't have any uncles or aunts or... It's just her, her brother, and her deceased parents. It's, it's weird. But I guess that happened, you know, since not all families from Sengoku era still exist. Um, whatever. But, uh, I guess I can tell you who she's based on, which is weird. Um, by the way, I like the way she looks here in, I guess, her casual wear. It's not, you know... I, eh. Well, I like the way she looks more here than in her regular wartime portrait, so putting that out there. Um, but she's based on a man called Yamamoto Isoroku, and he was a World War II Navy Admiral for the Imperial Japanese Navy, and that's what he was. That's, that's what she's named after. She's, you know, she's not based on him, as far as I can tell. She's just, like, she's just a namesake for the guy. Or rather, that guy is her namesake. There we go. Um, yeah. I mean, there, there isn't a single parallel that I've been able to find. Um, and as far as the guy goes, he's not really... Actually, he, I would talk more about him in Daite Koku than I would in Sengoku Rants, because he's... He's not really portrayed in that game well either, but that game's about World War II, so it fits more. It's just that, I mean, as far as he goes, he, you know, he fought against the United States in the uh, Pacific. Um, and he was... I think he was the the best and most well-known admiral um, of World War II. So, he ended up dying um, in combat, I think. So, that's how it went for him. So, you know. That's it there. Um, as far as my opinions for Isoroku, I said that I find her kind of boring, but I'll elaborate more on that later. Um, when I activate another one of her sequences, I'll keep my opinions about her related to those scenes. That's, that's appropriate, right? Um, I said that I would come to a decision about what I was going to do here. You know, Asai or Iga? Well... I kinda didn't, so I still don't know what I'm doing. Um, I said that I'd be taking out the Tenshi sect in this playthrough, and I I will definitely do that, but, you know, I could take out Iga before the Tenshi sect declares war on me, and I'd still have time left over. So what I think I'm going to end up doing is taking out Asai, and then, well, then I'm at war with Usugi and the Tenshi sect, which isn't really a problem, but... This this playthrough, it's a, it's a slippery slope, guys. It's <laughs> it's not it's not gonna be easy if I fuck it up too much. So I mean, I'm not really worried about it being hard or anything. I just gotta be more cautious. And I have EQ, so it's like here's your trump card, you know. If tragedy befalls you, then you can use EQ and you're fine. I'll let me recruit him. Yeah, I. Uh, this is new as well. I didn't show Shoji's scene, I guess, when I recruited him from prison, but it's just him talking to himself. You know, it's just like, Oh, blah, 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 Rance, he thinks he can trust me, I'm a badass, says Shoji, and then he's in your army. Like, that's it. That's why his intelligence is like three, okay? But, uh, EQ, I didn't talk about him at all. He is supposedly a yokai. He's not actually a human being. Um... I mean, if you look at him, you can tell. His eyes are weird, and he, he's, he's, he does a bunch of weird shit. He's not a regular person. So, I can stick with the uh, theory that he's a yokai. Um, without any problems. He gets along well with 3G as well, um, I believe. So, we're going to go to Asai, and... Oh, boy. Um, I really wasn't planning on recruiting anybody from Asai. I was not planning on doing that. Um, it might still happen. I need to, you know, I gotta think. 
I gotta think. That's that's the one benefit to having Asai, Asakura, having a go at them before Iga, because uh, uh, I said there wouldn't be spoilers, but I mean, is that directly, did I, did I say that? Did past audio say there would be no spoilers in relation to Isoroku or the entire playthrough? I guess it's just to Isoroku, but I'll maintain it for the whole playthrough, so I won't give out the spoilers. But those of you who know about this bullshit know why it's easier if I have more people left on the map. Because I want to avoid war with Tenegashima, and that's really it. So, now you know. I, don't, I didn't explain anything. But anyway, I'm declaring war on them. And uh, Yuki's a Miko. You can't obtain her in your first playthrough. You can't obtain her in this one. Um, her father is a monk. And you can obtain him whenever. Like, he's he's never not obtainable if you fight this faction. Um, he's got tons of children. So, when you're fighting a Sakura, they have a bunch of commanders. Like, these assholes in the scene right here are all commanders. They all happen to be warriors. A Sakura Yoshikage bred with so many women that he just has all of these children who are of age. And Yuki's the only woman that he had, the only female child. So, you know, you can capture all of his kids. I mean, they're all generics. They're all generic commanders, but, you know. Oh, and uh, this family, actually, I didn't talk about that at all. They're based on the real Asai family. Um, I, as far as, you know... Like, historical relevance, I don't know if there is any. I, I don't know if the Asai fam family, in reality, tried to unify Japan with di diplomacy. I don't know. I don't really care. <laughs> I, I like their uh, clan symbol a little bit. I don't know. Anyway, they're not hard. They're, they're a total pushover. Um, as are all the small one-territory factions, so... You don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about that, you know. <sighs> These people are just boring. This is just a boring... Uh, I, I know I didn't say it yet, but Asai Asakura is by far my least favorite clan in the whole goddamn game. I don't like any of these people at all. I, I, don't, I don't even like Yuki that much. I mean, she looks cool, but she's, she's, she's more similar to Aki. You know, she's a very similar unit. Um... Terrible, terrible in commander battles. Just awful. And is also a Miko that comes with healing mist and quite a few action flags. So, you know, to each their own. But if if I did happen to recruit Yuki, I <laughs> I wouldn't be using her at all. Um, the fuck. There we go. But yeah, Suzume will grow over time. She's not a focus right now. I haven't really been focusing on her. Um, Isoroku's gonna stay a good unit. Renmaru's gonna fall to the wayside and be thrown away, pretty much. I'm not gonna, you know... I'm not gonna deal with her too much. Just because she's boring. And she's such an, such an average warrior. It's like, goddamn. Um, okay, yeah, I'll let all these events play out as well. Um, because it's new. So, that works out well. Although, I should, I should announce that I, uh, well, it's not relevant. Never mind. I'll wait. I'll wait. Um, but yeah, this event here is basically going to introduce you to the third main story character for Asaya Sakura. Or, well, it's supposed to happen this turn. I don't know if it will. Um, it might be on their counter attack, rather. But this is not what I thought it was, so I will skip that. Um... These are the assassins that attack Rance. This happens in every playthrough, always the same. Same three guys, every single time. You know, and then the other two groups of assassins will also attack Rance. That should be familiar with. You should know what I'm talking about. Oh, by the way, I didn't know Syl could attack <laughs> when I uh, first played this game. I always used her to heal. I didn't, you know, I didn't know what the fuck a mage was. I didn't know what the icon next to her name meant. I didn't know it was a mage staff. I, I didn't even see it. <laughs> so, that's how that goes. Now what happens? I think, yes. Okay, this is what I was waiting for, but uh, this is Akinda san and... Eh, I mean... 
one of the worst units in the game, that's for sure. Um, I don't know. He he comes to try and help Asai out. He's like, hey, um, give me your wife. Well, give me not, not your wife. Give me a wife, your daughter, Yuki. I want to marry her, and then I'll help you out. And he says no. You know, like a good dad would. And then Yuki's like, no, I'm going to handle things my own way. And then she goes and does whatever Dasan wants, and then Dasan helps anyway. And that's the start of all of her problems. But this guy, oh god, what's the mask called? Um, it's like a no mask or something. That one's got a specific name, and I don't remember what it is. Tengu? I, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's got a specific name, and people have them. They had them. I don't know what they were used for, but it's real. I know he looks like a fuck-ass, but those masks are real, so... <laughs> so you know that. Um, but, yeah. Akinda-san, you can recruit him after you take out Asaya Sakura, you know? You can send Rance to the mountain to meet the guy, and Rance will, you know, you're given the option. Recruit him, or one-shot him, and you decide. Killing him, there's no merit to doing that. Um, you, you get nothing for it at all, and it's a waste of an action fan, but... Whatever. Oh, and uh, Yuki, her name means snow in Japan. That's that's fairly well known, I guess. That's why I know it, but that's a common name. And that's, you know, they, they talk about that. That's quite literally what the reference is for her name. I mean, the territory they're in gets, you know, Texas. The territory they're in is called Texas, and they get snow there, and that's what she was named after. They tell you that in the story. Um, I mean, there are a lot of characters in, you know, anime and video games, some bullshit called Yuki, and they're not named that because of the snow. Um, but this woman is. So, I guess it deserves a special announcement. Um, whatever. Yeah, I do like her character design. I like Yuki's character design. Um, I think she's the only person with blue hair like that in this game. I mean, Maria from... Liaises has blue hair, but it's not the same way, you know. It's, it's not bright blue, which is nice. So... Now it's happening. This event here, um, the son decides to help because of Yuki, and he sends pandas at you. Like, that's what he is. That's what he is. He's a panda commander. He's horrible. Um, so they attack. I mean, he controls them. They explain that all in the story. You'll see it. But, uh, you know, like in any other regular human being, myself included, you know, you get attacked. You're like, okay, let me defend against this. You defend. You know, you kill the pandas because it's not hard. Katsui can solo defend against the pandas. It is not even an issue. But you do that, and he attacks with more pandas, and you're like, two? Okay. Let me defend again. You defend against the second wave of pandas. Cool. Third wave of pandas. That's where I gave up. But it'll just go on infinitely. He'll continuously send waves of, waves of pandas against you. And you have to fall back. You, you're required to auto-lose that territory. Um, there's nothing you can do about it. So, that's why I did, and that's what it is, you know? You never fight him again, though. If you defended against Hakindasan at all there, um, he's, not actually in the, he's not actually in the fight, you know? Just six waves of pandas with no commander are in the fight. He's controlling them. But, that's it, you know? You never fight him again, or at all, I guess, because that doesn't count, but, yeah. This is EQ introducing him to his mom, and it's that thing that he's holding. Uh, that's his mother, and it can change shape, and he rides it around in combat. His sprite is on top of it. Um, you know, but, like, you can tell that he's kind of a yokai. I, that, it, it's so believable because he's so weird. I mean, I don't know if he's based on anybody. I've... You know, the name EQ, I don't know what that translates to or what that means, but I haven't found any information on the guy. So, you know, they they don't tell you what his age is. They don't tell you anything about him. Really, I mean, I'm doing his character events while I have him, but, he, you know, they don't tell you anything. It's just, here's EQ. <laughs> he, he likes to eat meat. Oh, shit. Oh, well. It was basically, that, that little bit that I skipped was just, uh, Yoshikagi, 
Yoshikage wondering where Yuki was. And Yuki's going to Hakinda-san. Um, because, you know, that guy, you know, Yoshikage didn't agree to this. Yuki did, of her own volition. So, yeah. But that, that bit I skipped was him turning the guy away. I gotta, I gotta avoid skipping that stuff. I gotta get less button happy, you know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna say trigger happy, even though I just did, because it's retarded. But you know, I guess it can't be helped, right, guys? Should we count those this playthrough? Because you know, at, at no fault of the translators, mind you, but they say it can't be helped eight thousand times because that's like a basic thing in Japanese speech. Shit, I should learn that just so. If I ever did go to Japan, I'd have a response for everything. But, whatever. Um, anyway, this leads to her scene, and it's terrible. I hate this one a lot. So, that's how that goes. Skip it. Though, uh, the son's mask falls off in the scene, and you can find out what the deal is, you know? You find out he's a cursed guy with four eyes, which... You know, it's... Not really that disturbing. I don't know. I could I could look at someone who looks like that in real life and not be upset. But, you know, I mean, there are a lot of physical deformities that can make a person cringe, but those are mostly related to, like, severe burns and things like that. that you know, having th three eyes on the side of your face, that's not that weird. I mean, that's his only deformity. He just has, well, and they're green, but... Whatever. That's why he wears the mask, and those are what allow him to control the pandas. Um, introduction to Hojo. Don't need this. Skip it. Ah! Still not sure how I'm handling these guys, but... Oh, it's Daidoji! Ah! Love her. To those of you who don't know. Well, I'll explain it more later. But, love her. Love the way she looks. Love that character design. Um... Nope. Not important. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next part.